How are you? Hello. This is part two of the four part series PBL. In the first clip, if you remember, we have tried to clarify our concept about PBL, its relevance. In this part, I am going to explain this Maastricht 7 jump model. You remember in the first clip, we said a PBL is these are the characteristics small group of students, 7 to 10, usually compromises of two sessions, presented with a problem trigger material, structured approach to solve the problem, design varies greatly between institutions. And I am going to talk about today is the Maastricht model 7 jump, a great design to conduct PBL. The trigger material, it is a paper based clinical scenario or any other problem scenario and laboratory data, photographs, video clips, they can all be used as a trigger material because the starting point of learning in a problem based learning is trigger material which is a clinical scenario. Coming to Maastricht 7 model, sorry, once a problem scenario is given to them, then the first step is or the first jump is student working in a group clarify the text of the problem scenario. So obviously, since a paper based problem, it was written in form of words and sentences and paragraphs. So the students, they read it, they can they understand or not, and obviously to understand sentences, they must know the meaning of the word. So they identify these are the words whose meaning they don't know, they try to clarify among themselves. What is the meaning of that? Then what is the meaning of the sentence? After students working in a group clarifying the text of the problem scenario, group defines the problem. So once they read the problem scenario, once they know what is written in it, then they brainstorm actually in this whole paragraph or this whole scenario, what is the problem? which has been written in all of these paragraphs or in sentences. Then brainstorming is used to identify explanation for phenomena observed in the problem scenario. So when they are seeing what the problem is, what the phenomena is, they try to generate explanation for that. Okay, what is the explanation for that? The group reaches an internal conclusion about the problem after brainstorming, talking about each other, then they reach to the conclusion, okay, this is the main problem or problems in this trigger material. Now they know what they already know about whatever it is the trigger material and what they don't know. What they want to know after this discussion forms the learning outcomes. The group formulates the learning outcomes. Once the learning outcomes the groups have decided that these are the learning outcomes, then they go, they study on their own at the time they feel like, how they feel like, from where they feel like. Of course, there is a guidance from the faculty because there is a guidebook which tells them that these are good, these are good resources of study. And after studying, the students group reconvene to discuss the knowledge acquired and when they discuss among themselves the knowledge they have acquired 
of what learning outcome they wanted to achieve, the concepts become better, they learn the knowledge of different subjects, and henceforth the learning continues. These steps or sub jumps, first five, students working in a group, clarifying the text of the problem scenario. Number two, group defines the problem. Number three, brainstorming is used to identify explanation for phenomena observed in the problem scenario. Number four, the group reaches in term conclusion about the problem. The group formulates the LO. This is the first session of the BMA. Then they work independently and then in the second session they join and they discuss what they have learned and learn from each other. Thank you very much. Have a good time. We we'll take a break and I will join you in the third part of the series. Have a nice day.